Hello everyone, welcome to the Cherry Heart Podcast. I'm Sandra and this is a maker's podcast featuring crochet, knitting, sewing and any other crafty bits and bobs I get up to. You'll be able to find the show notes for this podcast on my blog which is cherryheart.co.uk um, that's where I put all the information about all the projects I talk about. So if, if you've got a question about the pattern or the yarn I've used, um, you should find the information there on my show notes. And I'll put the link in the little drop down bar below. Um, this podcast has video chapters. Um, so again, in the drop bar below, you'll see a little timestamps and you can click on those to jump to the section of the podcast you want or if you hover your mouse along the bottom of the picture, the video picture, you'll see little sections and you can just click to go to whichever section you want. Um, you can find me on Instagram as Sandra Cherry HRT and I'm elsewhere around the web as Cherry Heart. Um, how are you? I haven't done this for three weeks and I've got to be honest, I my hopes aren't high for this episode. <laughs> I'm a little bit afraid of how it's go it will go because yeah, it's been a while and I can't remember anything. I feel like I pretty much say that at the beginning of every episode at the moment, but maybe it's a symptom of the times we're living in. Things aren't very normal at the moment, so you know. Let's use that as an excuse. <laughs> um, in theory, they should be feeling a bit more normal here because the schools have gone back. So, um, in theory, I can live a vaguely normal routine again now, but in truth, the schools going back have thrown me a bit. I don't know why. Um, it just feels a bit weird to sort of try and slip back into that old routine. It will come, I'm sure. Um, but last week was the first week and that felt very strange. We've kind of found our little homeschool routine and now we've got to settle ourselves down into a new routine again. So I'm all discombobulated. <laughs> but anyway, I thought I'd just plough on and get started because I realised I was starting to put it off. I could have made an effort to get this recorded last week really, but yeah i just <laughs> i just didn't and then yeah i realized i was procrastinating so i thought if i just get something out it's probably not going to be quite how i wanted it to be but better to do something than just keep putting things off so here i am i hope you're faring all right um not that i'm not all right by the way just to say everything's fine and just you know you know just you know it's all a bit weird that's all but yeah i hope you're doing all right i know a lot of people are really struggling now with uh you know everything we've been going through but i hope it's sort of a little light at the end of the tunnel uh well here at the moment i can only speak for where i am i don't you know it's a different for everyone isn't it um anyway let's get on with it shall we <laughs> Um, let me show you what I finished. So both of the things I finished, as far as I can recall, are over here. I can't even remember what I've done now. Three weeks is a long time. I need to get back to my bi-weekly schedule. But anyway, pointless lace knitting is what I want to talk about. We'll talk about this one first because you have at least seen this green thing here. Let me grab it. Right, I really do not know how to show you this because it is quite big and it is very flimsy. So I've hung it on here just so I can even hold it at all and sort of give you any idea of what it looks like. Because it's, let's see if I can, oh, let's turn this around and see if I can get one there to sort of show you how fine it is. that's just one layer of it there. I don't know if you can see on that edging as well. It's actually had, it's, um, it's a knitted piece, but it's got a little crochet edging on it. I love that little detail. Um, I'm just going to grab something else. 
I was just going to show you the book the pattern came out of. So it's this one here, Victorian Lace Today, and both this green scarf and that pink thing came out of this book, which I've had for ages and I uh, haven't really used so i'm using it so i'm joining in with the keep calm and carry on podcast archive cow um where the idea the sort of premise of the cow is you make something that's been in your queue of things to make for you know several years i think over three years is what they use as a guideline but i think they've opened it up to sort of include old whips and anything that's getting on a bit that you want to get finished really but yeah i've had that for so long and not done anything with it so it's really nice to kind of use it um it's very hard to show the pattern i will put a picture in i've taken a picture of it on just a white background so you can get some of that pattern um i don't know what i'm going to say now i've paused i've lost my track um Yes, so it's quite hard to sort of show, I guess is what I'm saying. I talked last time about the construction of it as well, so I won't particularly go into that again, just to sort of say that that was part of the reason why I wanted to knit it, really. It was just the way it was made was very interesting. And it was just enjoyable to do on that basis. I'll try and show you some of that middle panel, which is this. This bit here so this is border and this is border and this is kind of the middle section so it's all border really um the yarn i used was a uh, handmaiden fine silk lace weight yarn and the pattern i used has got a very catchy name so it's called scarf but then after it, it's got with the number 20 edging from the knitted lace pattern book, Thompson Brothers, Kilmarnock, Scotland, 1850. <laughs> so, you know, catchy. Um, yeah, it's on page 84. Someone was asking me about, they said they had this book and they wanted to know which one it was. But it's page 84, the one I'm making. So, but yeah, um, I was saying last time that I couldn't really see me wearing it. And I think that's still largely true. Um, this isn't a colour I would probably choose now, although it is gorgeous. Um, yeah, I can't see that many opportunities where I could wear it. But on the other hand, it is lovely and I think it would be a shame not to wear it at all. So I think I might at least try and wear it to something at some point. You know, when there's actually anything going on that you can go to to wear anything to nowadays. Um, I don't think it's an exactly hang around the house piece, put it that way. But if we ever go out into the big wide world again and do anything, maybe I could wear it for that. It'd be nice for a wedding or something, wouldn't it? Um, yes. There's not else, a lot else to say about that that I didn't say last time, I don't think. I'll pop it back. And anyway, so the second thing I have made is an even more balmy project because I really don't see any circumstances whatsoever under which I could wear this unless I had to dress up as a Victorian lady for a fancy dress party or something. Unlikely. Um, so this is a, well I'm not sure what it is, I'm not quite sure how you say the word, um, a fichu I think is what it is. It's basically a little short shawl that just sits around the neck i'm going to put it on to show you um again i just really wanted to make it actually before i put it on i'm just going to talk about the construction a little bit so this is the inside so it's got this rectangular rectangular panel which is this bit here with these little dots on so you make that up and then you get the all the stitches all the way around the entire rectangle and you knit this edging on it all the way round and then you kind of block all that and then you fold it over so that uh, 
So I've got rectangle with one border hanging down, the other border you flip back and then you put this tie on it. But it's, I think once I had all of these stitches, all the stitches from the rectangle on my needles, it was over a thousand stitches. I don't think I've ever had so many stitches on my needle. But it's quite short, you know, it's not a sort of a massive amount of knitting, just as well at 10,000 stitches, because you'd never do it, would you? Yeah, again, I don't know, I just wanted to knit it for some reason. So, imagine, if you will, that I've got my fancy Victorian dress on, I've got my corset in, I'm all sucked in in the middle but I have quite a bit of cleavage on show as the style of the day but actually it's a bit chilly so I want to put something on to cover myself up a bit a bit of warmth and maybe I want to cover my little modesty up you know maybe I'm a married woman and I don't want to be showing my cleavage off to all and sundry so maybe I put this on for a sort of a little bit more of a modest look. So that's what it's kind of for. That's why they came about. Um, yes. So it's like a little sort of decorative extra, but it, you know, it adds a bit of warmth. You know, they would be quite low cut at the back sometimes. So that's covering up all the sort of nice, all the little bits that you might be getting a draft on <laughs> while you're sitting in the parlor. Um, I did actually make one of these little things before one time. It was a little less Victorian style than this. Um, it was a crochet one. And I made it and I tried to wear it. But then I immediately saw why these went out of fashion and we don't wear them anymore. It's because you can't do anything in them without them all falling all over the place. <laughs> so just go off to one side or at the back or fall right forward. This one's actually not as bad as the other one. This feels like it might stay a little bit more in place. But clearly, when you were a Victorian lady and all you sat in the parlour, all you did rather was sit in the parlour while the maids did the work, and you could perhaps uh, welcome, you know, a little visitor in and have a little cup of tea. And all you had to do was sit there and go, oh, yes, that's very lovely. Two sugars, thank you. Um, you know, that's fine, you could just sit there and perhaps manage to uh, drink a cup of tea because you'd be basically stationary so it would stay in place and everything would be fine. Or maybe you play bridge after dinner. You could probably hold your cards and put those down without moving too much. All fine, all fine. But if you go forward <laughs> in time to when you have to actually move around and do things like your own cleaning or, you know, make dinner or something, really a lot less practical. <laughs> it's like I say, as soon as you sort of move around or anything, it wants to fall all over the option. And anyway, I don't really, I don't really love how it looks on, to be perfectly honest with you. It's just, it's a bit fussy, it's a bit much, and I wouldn't choose this colour, but I just happen to have the yarn in this colour and the pattern is in this colour in the book, or similar, it's, I think it's quite this bright actually. I'll just show you this one if I can find it. I think it's Fichu, it's F I C H U. I'm sure I'm assuming it's not Fichu and it's like a soft C. So here we are, there it is in the book. So not quite even as bright as mine, it's a bit more sort of corally in the book and this one is called The Opera Fish You, page 122. I won't show you the pattern obviously but there she is wearing it and there's it's got you know how you do your construction with picking up your stitches all the way around. Yeah, again, it was just an exercise in wanting to make it, just to sort of see how it would turn out, to see if I could get it to kind of work nicely. Because you have, 
like I say, you've got to put all those stitches on. Then you've got to kind of block it right round and stretch this out so it's thrill, you know, it goes all lays all thrilly, frilly. And then you have to put your tie on and then you really tightly gather up to sort of enhance that frill look. So yeah, it was more of a I don't know, an exercise in knitting really. <laughs> so I don't know quite what I'll do with it now. Uh now I've made it. Um, I should have made it in a slightly less exciting colour and then like maybe you could even have given it to a museum in a kind of, you know, use this in your, <laughs> you could use this in your display, it's from a, you know, it's actually from a Victorian knitting book, that's where she's taken all these patterns from, so it's kind of authentic in that sense. Yeah, I know bit crazy thing to do really but I don't often get the urge just to knit things for the sake of it normally when I make things it's because I definitely want the thing but something happened and I just had to make them so I did come in to say hello are you Go on. here he is here's my little trap Now I can see you now. Can they? <laughs> You're going to go and sit down. Hmm? Um, where was I? Oh, I have got another finished thing actually a sewing thing. I was going to show you this too last time, but I forgot. Um, it's just a little pouch. So last time I was talking about a English paper piecing project that I've got on the go, which is the it's called the flower, just called the flower quilt. It's a block, well, block of the month quilt. It's called, but actually you get more than one block a month, so I don't know. But anyway. Um, yes, yeah, so it's um, I got it from Alice Caroline. It's like a subscription thing. You get a box each month, and then it's got all the fabric and the templates uh, that you need to make sort of so, so many blocks. Um, I've had so there was a couple in the first one, and then there was two and a half block in the second one, and then the March one should be coming anytime soon. So. I'm frantically working. I was a bit late ordering mine. I didn't order mine till February. Um, but my sister had seen it and ordered it. And I really liked the look of it, so I joined in with her. So I've caught up a bit. I've done all of my January ones. And I've done a block and the half block of my February ones. I still need to finish my last block, but I have started it. So anyway, I'm hope hopefully by the end of March I'll be caught up. But in the January box there was also a little extra which was the things to make this little pouch to put all your little English paper piecing accessories in. So the fabric and everything for this was provided as well so I just had to sew it up but I've never made a pouch like this before and I thought it was quite cute. I didn't do it very perfectly, I did make, well not make mistakes but I just did some bits not so clean as I like to particularly this getting this curved you have to sew the zip in curved which was sort of all right but my fab you know my my fabric was starting to sort of pull a bit and then you had to then when I came to sew this sort of top line it was even more difficult but it's not bad I'm pretty pleased with it and I quite like the idea of making another one I need another zip so it's quite a long zip to get all the way because it goes all the way down it opens up nicely and then I've got some of my little bits in there, my thread, my tiny little pin cushion that I got in my uh, Nikki Franklin advent last year, my little glue stick for putting my pieces together, scissors, yeah, I was pretty happy with them so I 
can see now this is where look I can see here I haven't puckered slightly on my zip so it's so annoying. The other side, now I puckered a bit on the other side as well. So it was going great. And then I did mess it up a little bit down there. I'm not quite sure how you maybe I was just going too fast, maybe I just need to go quite slow. I pinned it plenty, I think. Oh <laughs> weird pitter patter feet noises went over the top there. I'm never sure how much of that sort of sound you hear. It's loud and clear in here though, wasn't it? But um he said it. What are they doing? It's birds, but hmm. um right, so that's all my finished things. Now I've got another whip, and this one I talked about last time as well, so it's just a progress. But I'm remaking my painted roses blanket. I'm actually making two blankets now because I couldn't quite decide which colours I like best, so I thought I'd make two little ones. So, um, the reason I'm remaking it is you know, I've got this stonewashed um, yarn, so it's the Sheep Years stonewashed yarn, um, and I just really like how it looks in my Painted Roses pattern. So for my original pattern, I had two slight variations, but just the middle was different. So this one, I've changed it up slightly. And I've got this version, which is quite close to the original. And then this one, which is a slight variation where I've put the darker color in the middle and I've got different leaves. So I'm gonna alternate those two. Where you want to? Are you going? Are you gonna sit down? Um, I've got those two that I'm going to alternate in the first one, so that's closest to the original blanket, and I've got my pile of squares ready to go for that. It'll probably be a tiny bit smaller than my original, maybe, because this yarn's a bit smaller. And then my second blanket, I've got the squares for that as well. And I'm going to have a little bit more variety, so I've got this one. Which is probably my favourite of all of them. I haven't blocked them yet, as you can see. So there's that one. And then I've got the same sort of variation where I change the inside and outside colours for that. And then I'm going to pop what else have I got? I've got this pink one, pink and pink one. Which I really like. Do they do two versions of that? Maybe not. No. I am going to pop some of these yellow ones in for a little extra zingy zing. So I've got four different squares for this version. You can't just leave pop of here. So looking at things in the garden, I'm getting very excited, I think. So those are my four different variations for my pink version, which I think I might love this version even more. These I just like very much indeed. But I really like this jade green as well, so I wanted to bring that in. So now I've just got to join them and finish all the borders up and everything. But I set my little production, my little crochet production line going and sort of didn't seem to take too long to make them really. I'm quite pleased with that. And then I've got two kind of little blankets to go. Should I need them? Um, again that's another thing that I'm just sort of making for the heck of it really. But I just couldn't resist. I've been once I started experimenting with this, these, this yarn, I just loved how it looked so much I couldn't stop. And then last of all, a completely barking project. Every single project I'm talking about, with the exception of this one, which has got good practical use, is a bit barking, isn't it really? Because I have no need for any of these things. They're just... 
fun e projects, I suppose. <laughs> but then, what is the point of doing this if you don't just do things that you want to do for the sake of doing it? You know, it's not all. You know, the need to knit or crochet for the sake of providing things for a definite purpose is long gone, isn't it? You can buy things so cheaply now. It's not really why we do it, is it? <laughs> anyway, so I started at the weekend a little bit of an even crazier project. So it's crochet and it's a million billion teeny teeny tiny well they're circles and squares alternating i don't know if you can really tell that they're circles once you get them sort of joined up they kind of pull in directions so that's a square and this one this one this one and this one are circles i don't know if you can really tell much difference between them so I saw um, I saw a film a long time ago, and it was called Bright Star. It was about a poet, I forget who, was it Keats or Yeats? Someone, anyway. Um, and it was a love story, and it had in it the lady, the woman in it, um, wears this cardigan, and it's a Sophie Degard cardigan. And if you're familiar with her work, you'll know this tiny, tiny little things are very much up her street. Um, and it's just amazing. It's a whole sort of cardigan made out of these teeny, tiny little things. Probably, well, definitely even tinier than this because she does things in sort of really fine uh, thread, really. And like in sort of embroidery thread kind of thickness. Um, Yes, yeah, so it was a cardigan made up, and this was this is sort of my approximation of the kind of look it had. Like I say, it was probably even finer and tinier than this. Anyway, I loved it. I'll put a picture in for you. <clears throat> um, I stalked the internet to find some, you know, images from the film that I, you know, and I saved those. But I just had in the back of my mind, you know, you're never going to finish this, and but. I, you know, it's one of those ideas that's never quite entirely gone away, but it was quite a long time ago. I saw it quite soon after it came out, as soon as it came onto Sky, anyway. Um, I just, I don't think I had the same power then to do it, to be honest. I don't think I could have made it back then, although I really loved it. I think, in fact, that was probably around that time that I made my Sophie scarf, which is similar sort of thing it's circles and squares the circles are a lot bigger and i made it in dk yarn so the whole thing is kind of bigger and it's just a straight scarf but i think that was very much inspired by that whole episode anyway cut forward to now <laughs> and i watched the new emma the other day um so the uh jane and austin film emma um and they've reused that cardigan so the character harriet smith wears it i can't remember quite when a good halfway through i think before she wears it i can't believe my eyes like not only that cardigan again but i didn't even know they reused things in different um productions so yeah, anyway, so it was amazing to see it again, but of course that's just reignited all of those feelings I had about it before, about how cute it was, and yeah, I, I think, I don't know, something about making these sort of projects lately, and it's just made me think now is the right time to do this, I don't know why. So why not make something that's going to take a billion years and have a gazillion ends to weave in, why not? <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I'm thinking some kind of wearable garment in conclusion, as she has on Bright Star. It's quite, um, it's a cardigan she wears on Bright Star. Whether I will do a cardigan? In Emma, it's got a ribbon on it and she ties it at the front. I'm really wondering if it is exactly the same thing now. Because on Bright Star, I thought they sort of pulled it round in a kind of almost like a little wrap thing 
Anyway, I'm not quite sure exactly what form mine will take. I was almost thinking it might not be a cardigan, just like a, I guess, jumper. Not that it'd be very jumperish, would it, like this, but you know. So it might just go straight across and just have armholes. It'll be like a rectangular, boxy kind of thing with armholes, maybe. Or, I don't know, I might do like a cardigan, like a big... I'm quite drawn to oversized things. It's a bit of the in thing at the minute, isn't it? Oversized things, which doesn't help when you've got a tiny, tiny little thing. But yeah, so maybe it'll just be sort of hanging open with panels and sort of like a... Maybe a shortish sleeve, I'm thinking. I really don't quite know exactly how it's going to go. I'm making some and joining some together and seeing seeing how I get on. But this is, it's not a bad start, really, for the amount of time I've spent on it. And I'm weaving in my ends as I go, because otherwise, can you imagine? This is one of those projects where it's at least as much time weaving in as is actually crocheting, if not more. No, at least equal anyway, which is a little bit. I found demoralising in the past, but it's not bothering me with this. There's no rush, is there? It just... I don't know. For some reason at the minute it's not bothering me. If I don't... You know what I'm like, I need to see progress on things. So if I don't see progress on it, I might get frustrated. But let me show you the yarns I'm using. So I've picked out, I didn't want anything too overwhelming. In the film, it's quite bright, the colours they've used, but I didn't want that because I didn't think I'd wear it. Whereas I thought this could just sit over sort of, you know, white vest top or something and look quite nice in summer, I think. Are you what? What are you doing? Um, yeah, so I've picked out from my minis, I've picked out an awful lot of my kind of paler ones. They were sitting in this basket anyway, so I've just picked out some of the brighter ones and had a shuffle so all the paler ones are together. Um, and that's what I'm going to work through. Keeping it fairly random. Um, you know, keeping colours just fairly random, but nothing too bright. And yeah, I'll, go, I'll see where it goes, I'll come back to you. I really hope I stick with it and finish something, because I think it will look quite cute. What you doing? You keep seeing things that catch his eye and I keep thinking he's going to try and leap off to the floor and I'm going to have to dive in and save him. So the last thing I've got to talk about, I think, is um, Pip's Patterns in Progress, or, well, Patterns, I suppose, because this one isn't in progress. It's actually one I released um, last week or the week before, possibly, um, which is my farmhouse patch blanket. I will put a picture in because I haven't actually got the blanket. I originally designed this for Starcraft a few years ago. And it comes with a cushion as well, by the way. I'll put the picture in with the cushion so you can see. Um, yeah, so I designed this one for Starcraft a couple of years ago, as I said. And um, so my thinking at the time, I was inspired by quilts. So I'm thinking of sort of traditional quilts, kind of like, you know, you would imagine on a farmhouse, very sort of Anne of Green Gables-ish, I suppose, or, you know... I don't know if she had a quilt like that, but, but you know, those sort of feed sack fabrics, those really sort of 20s or 30s little ditzy fabrics, sort of made into like a traditional nine block quilt. And um, yeah, so it's very much inspired by that. So the yarn I used was the Batik, Starcraft Batik yarn, because it's got that kind of faded out quality that I wanted. That was kind of like a good match for that feed sack fabric-y feel. And then I wanted to sort of kind of mimic the quilt lines, like the sewn quilt lines going across. Um, so I've got sort of raised stitches to kind of show that. Yeah, I'm quite happy with how that turned out. Um, from that point of view, I think it kind of does what I wanted it to do. Like, yeah. Um, 
so that I've released that as the digital version now and I've kind of spruced it up a bit so um, on the did so that Starcraft released it as like just a written paper pattern although I think you can get it online but anyway in my digital version I've put in I've added in charts for all the motifs the various different uh, ones that you need to make up the nine block squares and the larger squares and I've also put some photo tutorials in just to help with those um, getting those quilt lines on and getting them right because it's kind of a tricky pattern just as a written straight written pattern it's kind of tricky um, but yeah so I just thought the photo tutorials just helped make everything just really clear you know you read a pattern and you it's not that you don't know what to do I think it's just sometimes you're like is that what that means and you don't want to sort of go wrong whereas with a photo tutorial you can just check and go oh yeah that's what it means okay great it just removes that element of doubt i think so yeah so i've added those in as well so that's available um i've got it on ravelry lovecrafts and etsy for that one so you've got the full range of choices um yeah i'll pop the link into show notes for you so you can go along and have a look at all the details um and find the purchase links there should you wish to Anyway, the sun has come out now. It's all looking rather lovely, isn't it? But uh, it's snoring. The birds are singing. I wonder if you can hear them. Probably not. And even if you could, you'd have to block out the sound of a snoring mutt to be able to hear it. Right, anyway enough waffle for me i'm going to go thank you for being here again thank you for listening and putting up putting up with it if you made it this far well done um if you'd like to give a little like or subscribe that would be fabulous but um yes i will see you oh i thought of something else i was just gonna say my giveaway my hundredth episode giveaway last episode i announced the winners and some of you have come back to me so i've sorted you out with your prizes but i haven't there's a couple of you i haven't heard from so if you entered the giveaway the hundredth episode giveaway just pop back to last episode 101 and just see if you're a winner and if you were just drop me a line either on instagram or go to my blog and use my contact me details so that you can email me because otherwise I, if you email I've tried to look through for other messages and I can't see anything so I don't think it'd get through any other way because you'd have to put your email address in and I think a lot of spam filters will block that sort of thing so yeah so contact me on Instagram or send me an email if I haven't heard from you yet that was the thing I was gonna say because I know a couple of you I still haven't heard from. okay that's it um, so thank you for being here, thank you for watching, and look after yourselves, enjoy a lovely crafty moment or two whenever you can, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Hello, here's trouble. Come on then. Oh, I'm stuck again, but I'm stuck again. Um.